Smack it, flip it, rub it down. Buff it, twist it, reverse it. No. <laughs> Welcome to a special mini sode series that we're going to be doing here that we are just so excited about. We are. We're excited because we got popular. Yeah. Yeah, we really, <laughs> like, this actually has been quite a month. It has been quite a month. I'm sorry. Just don't talk to me because I'm so popular. <laughs> I'm too busy taking emails right now. I'm oh, popular in oh. DMs. Excuse me. <laughs> and being the social butterfly that you are. I am a social butterfly. Oh, my God. <laughs> it is so true. It's sickening. Yeah, it really is. And I mean, like, I'm I'm social. I have to be social for my job. I can make small talk with pretty much anyone. Uh-huh. And, but like, I do not make friends like you do. I genuinely become besties at everywhere. Yeah, you do. With people. I love people. I love getting to know people. It's my fa- literally my favorite thing about Derby is just meeting people. <laughs> like I am totally comfortable with just being a shit player forever. <laughs> as long as I can just go out and meet people and talk about the thing I love, which is Derby. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I do. I love meeting people. I love I love talking to all the players from the other teams. Yeah. That's why it's really good to be a not snobby team. Yeah. Because you don't know what you're missing out on. You're missing out on some good quality friendships from other people. Yeah. I totally agree with that. I just I just don't do that as well as you do. Like, mm-hmm. I can be social, but I'm also... I have a very standoffish face. I definitely have resting bitch face for sure yeah i don't think i i have that no you don't have that problem no you don't i I, have a smile face i can look very cold (laughs) you can't but also in other times you you cannot like oh 100 just changes it it drastically you are like a walking cartoon character i am very animated you're very animated (laughs) very animated (laughs) i either have like a neutral face or i'm smiling like there's not that's true or like bawling my eyes out like they, but that's not a norm but yeah i usually it's just either neutral or i'm smiling yeah there's not a whole lot of in between i i my face will fall into a grimace at at like restaurants without me knowing it and my husband just looks at me and she's like why are you like scowling at that person i'm like i am not scowling at that person <laughs> i bet that other person thinks you're scowling at oh them. apparently everybody <laughs> thinks i'm scowling at this person when really i'm just like do I know that person from somewhere? <laughs> it, it, did do like did I date a guy that looked like that in high school or gra- or like college? <laughs> I get that a lot actually. When I do have strange face, it's somebody's because my mom will will call me out on it. She's like, "You're looking at me weird," and it's like, "Oh, because I'm thinking about something." Right, but I'm looking yeah. at you. Right, yeah. I, I'm. i You're just. You're just in the in the path of my daydream sca- stare. Yeah, you're like, just there. Yeah, but I'm not actually looking at you. <laughs> However, if I'm at a restaurant, this it always happens at a restaurant because my husband and I we we like to try different. We're foodies. We enjoy going out to dinner. Um, like if, <laughs> if I'm being judgy and I'm just like. That fucking guy's an asshole. Like, because I just heard him like talk to somebody rudely or like say something mean to his like partner or what have you. I'm just like in my head. I'm just like that motherfucker. That's shithead. Like, yeah. so yes, then I do. My face then telegraphs the exact thoughts that I'm having, and then I'm fucked. And I, it's, it's, like I said, I have little to no control over it. Yeah, that's okay. Mm. Anyway, enough about my face. Yeah, enough about your face. Hey, let's talk about like emails. Yeah, and so stuff. Na- we didn't even say what the name of our mini sode oh, are going to be. What's the name of our mini sode? What we're going to name this new segment of our podcast is called Open Skate. Open Skate. Yeah, like Open Skate at your local skating rink. Yeah. And you can just do whatever you want and talk about whatever you want. And that is where you all come in. Uh, we are going to read your emails and your DMs and it's best if it's an email, but Hey, we're not any way you want to communicate with us. We are, we're for it. We're all for Mm -hmm. it in this world of technology. Hey, carnage, where can they send the emails? Holy shit. Coming hot into the box at gmail.com. Hey, where else can they send an email? You can also send an email via our website, which is coming hot into the box dot com very good 
Thanks. You remembered. I did. I probably would have fallen all over my words. That's okay. That's I got you. <laughs> I did. You did. You did it. Did it. <laughs> so we're gonna take some of your emails and your stories. And we're gonna talk about it. And we're gonna talk about. It. We're gonna. Read. We're gonna talk about you. <laughs> we're gonna talk about you. And we just want to say that like. The outpouring of support that we've gotten over the last month has been like it, it's it's really been the highlight of yeah of my year for sure <laughs> for reals yeah it's just really made a difference in my day every day <laughs> me too it gives me something yeah it gives me a little extra something yeah oh you know I just remembered we should talk about something before we get into our emails that we're oh. gonna read we should talk about something that we've been asked by a lot of people is if we're going to roller con oh my god would we not love to be there this we year? we would love to go to roller con this year mm. but unfortunately mm. due to work obligations and money and, and money <laughs> work obligations and money we cannot go this year but we are planning on going next year hell yeah in fact that might not be the only thing we do next year. There's going to be a lot of things that we do next year. We have a lot of big things coming for this podcast. Yeah. And it involves a lot of you. It does. Yeah. This this is not just about us. This is about the whole community. Yeah. Yeah. And we want to hear from you. We want to hear your stories because what I one of the things I love about Derby is that everybody's got a story. Mm -hmm. Every single person has a story as to why they got into it, how they got their name, a uh, awesome thing that happened. Yeah. You know, like we want to know all the things. We want to know your name stories. We want to know your derby wife stories, your proposal Ooh, stories. Yeah. We are going to be doing an episode, I think pretty soon about derby wives. Yeah. We should do derby I, wives too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so we're, we've got a couple of uh, messages here. And Slice, why don't you kick us off? Okay. Um, first email comes from Icarish from the south coast of England. Hey, England. Hey, England. We're so happy you're listening. What up, UK? What up? Hey, guys. I'm Icarish. And I skate in a league in the south coast of England. I wanted to join in with sharing my derby story, as I also probably wouldn't have found roller derby if it wasn't for lockdown. During quarantine, one of my friends was telling me that she wanted to try it out. And <clears throat> at that point, I can't remember if I had ever heard of it before. Or if it was one of those sports that I vaguely knew of, but thought, oh, that's an American thing. There'd never be anything like that over here. I think I must have seen Whippet at some point, as did most of us. And went, yeah, that's not real. That's not a real sport. But anyway, I decided to look up more about it on a whim. Because what else is there to do when you're stuck inside your house? And it turned out there was a league in my own city that practiced about a 20-minute drive for me. Obviously, they weren't active at the time, but I followed them on Facebook just for fun. Anyway, towards the end of 2022, when things were starting to open back up again... They put out an ad saying they would be recruiting new members in October with no experience necessary. An important thing to note is that I moved to the city in 2019, about seven-ish months before the pandemic hit. During lockdown, the handful of friends that I had in the city had all mostly moved away. So when I saw this ad, I basically, I was basically clawing my own skin off with desperation to get out of my flat and get some social interaction and feeling kind of lost since I was essentially back to square one with almost no nearby friends to hang out with. So even though I literally never roller skated in my life and I am generally very wary of leaving my comfort zone, I thought, you know what? Fuck it and signed up. And genuinely, I think it was the best decision of my life. My league has been around for about 10 years now, 10 year anniversary in October. But during lockdown, apparently all but eight members dropped out and they had to entirely rebuild. So it very much feels like I'm growing as part of the team and the team is growing with me. I moved up from rookies to the main league in March, currently holding the record for fastest from joining to being rostered. And my first ever game that same month was also the first game in the history of the league where we had enough skaters to play entirely by ourselves without any guest skaters to add to our members. I love everyone on my team so much and I'm so thankful for this ridiculous sport 
and wonderful community around it. It's not something I thought I would find, especially by accident. Really looking forward to all the years and copious bruises to come. Also, I just wanted to say, I know there's only two episodes out so far, but I'm really loving the podcast. Much love from England and looking forward to hearing more. I love that so much. I loved it too. I related to this entire email. I, you could have written that yourself. I could have written this email myself. Yes, for sure. But can can we can we just start by saying who hasn't heard of Whip It? <laughs> that is in the Derby community. Oh yeah, or everybody. Like, how many people like when they heard about Roller Derby, they either heard about it through Whip It or as soon as they heard about it, watch Whip It. Oh, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Or did like a watch party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I felt really close to that one. Thank you, Icarus. I I loved literally everything about it our league is so similar yeah to when i joined we barely had we barely had any players and we were very hands-off for the first basically year yeah because i was here we tried coming back in 2021 Mm -hmm. like the summer of and we played in masks and that was awful and there was no contact correct we couldn't we just we just drilled skills and a lot of people left because they were like, I'm not going to keep coming and drilling skills. Like I just want to play the game. Yeah. Yep. And yep. for me, I was just learning. So I was like, hur, 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 I'm happy to learn any skills you guys got for me. Yeah. So yeah, we had, we, I think we had about 10. We had about 10. And when we came out of quarantine, we rebranded. Yeah. So we, we like, I really feel this email because I feel like I have grown with this league. Like we've turned this league into something really special. Yeah. And growing with it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel really like I thank you, Icarush. And thank you for those just those kind words. Like we appreciate that. Much love from England. Yeah. England. All right. So uh, next I have an email from Lovey who is from Bellingham Roller Betty's in Bellingham, Washington. Washington State. Washington State. The other side of the country from us. Yes. Almost directly. Almost dr- <laughs> almost directly. <Yep. laughs> All right. So here we have it. <clears throat> hey Slice and Carnage. I just finished the first episode and I loved it. Honestly, it sounded so similar to how me and my co-captain talk to each other. You both really are so funny. I also loved Shit's Creek. And the sound quality was great in my purple Geo Tracker Barbie car BT dubs. Her name is Leela. She's a salty bitch. So my derby name is Miss Love Hits, a.k.a. Lovey. And my origin story has got some similar elements to it. I was a pretty competitive artistic skater back in the day. And post-military... I was looking for something similar but different. Art just wasn't hitting the same anymore. So I was on this camping trip with some mutual friends and a Bellingham roller betty suggested derby, which I only knew from Whip It. Hey. Hey. And then I noticed they were also part of a group that came in right after the artistic practice. So I was like trying to show off and be all badass in front of the league by attempting traveling camels at like Mach 5 and crashing hard. Only took like 12 of those for Poquito Mustachio to come over and say hi and also recommended I put that energy towards something a little different. Well, I started booty camp and within 20 minutes, I'm already in trouble with Pokey for trying to help this other skater who couldn't even stand up get the basics. I mean, I appreciate the ass reaming now, but back then I was like, bitch, she needs some help and I'm a helper. And then it came time to introduce ourselves and everyone's saying shit like, I've been skating for two weeks or today's my first time on skates. So my socially awkward ass is like, fuck, I can't say my real experience. They'll think I'm a stuck up, know it all, basic white bitch. The best I could come up with was I have a bit of artistic experience, been skating for a few years, short for I was on the USARS world team for four years and I skate better than I walk. Because I competed for 28 years. And yeah, when you spend 28 years being told to skate like you have a stick up your butt, getting low is hard. I legit failed my minimums first round. Okay, well, only laughs because those things are the devil. Got drafted to the cog blockers 
and promptly tore my rotator cuff, then dislocated, sprained my ankle, nearly broke it. I get hurt a lot because I have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Fully aware it's a terrible idea for someone with EDS to do extreme sports. You're not my dad. And then they put me on the board of directors and had me start teaching level one for the junior league. Then fucking COVID happened. This is my first real season actually skating and someone thought it was a great idea to make me captain. Imposter syndrome, hardcore. My co-captain is thankfully my bestie on the team, THZ. So that's where I'm at in my story. Anywho, love the show. Keep it up. About to scoot my happy ass over to episode two on my way to the rink to teach artistic lessons. Y'all going to RollerCon this year? Laters, lovey. Thank you so much, lovey. Oh, uh, we really appreciate it. Sadly, no, not going to RollerCon as as previously mentioned. As previously mentioned, you're not going to RollerCon. <laughs> but yet another. So this purple geo tracker, like I totally, I I totally know what that car looks like. The, it is a Barbie car. Yeah, I I I knew. I knew somebody who had a pink geo tractor tracker. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> Back in the day, yeah, they are they are the the Barbie car. They are the Barbie car. Yeah, for sure. They are not that great of a car, but you're you're very on trend. Yes, very on trend. Look at you go. Look at you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, 28 years of artistic experience. Damn. Yeah, traveling camels. I give you credit. I love. I I didn't get to that point so much in my artistic career. <laughs> I only did it for like three years. <laughs> I don't even know what a traveling camel is. Uh, yeah, I will show you a, a video of that. What her name is, Mrs. Love Hits, right? Yep, Mrs. Love Hits. Do you know that? Do you know what that's off of? I don't. Mrs. Lovitz from Sweeney Todd. Oh, yeah, Mrs. Lovitz meat pies. Oh, eh? Eh? ah, I got it. I was it. like, what? A musical reference. I'm all over this one. Way to go. I I chronically fall asleep during musicals. You do. You it's do. true, but I don't. Nope. I don't. I love musicals. But yeah, I, I appreciate this whole email. Like when I read it, I was like, yeah. I, I and I get that too like you see somebody in your freshie class that like you know that you skate well or skate well enough or skate way better than that other mm-hmm. person <laughs> at least at this point meaning like your skills are just there and trying to help but I can see it from both sides because as a, as a good person you want to try to help that person who's mm-hmm. not doing so well but coming from like a coach and trainer's point of view you have one freshie helping and another freshie and it's like <gasps> What are you doing? Don't don't, don't do, do it. Do not do that. <laughs> You're gonna take her down with you. <laughs> because as as a coach, like there are definitely skaters that join Derby who know how to skate, mm-hmm. and that's fantastic. But there, well, I don't want to say but in a bad way, but like there are people who know how to skate and people who know not how to skate. Like they just don't know how to skate whatsoever. Yeah, they have zero balance. zero experience. That's where I was, and that's and I you are moldable at that point like you you're learning how to skate derby Mm -hmm. versus somebody who knows how to skate but does not know how to skate derby there is definitely a difference Mm -hmm. for sure so yeah people who have artistic skating backgrounds don't know how to bend their knees yeah and that's yeah and that's not good because it's like yes you can fly like the wind, but if somebody comes up and hits you, you are going to fly like the wind, like because you can't get low if you're not bending your knees. And artistic skating is very upright. Artistic skating is very upright, yeah, and and grand and svelte and fancy pants and beautiful. Which is why, like, I do skate better than I walk for sure. Oh, I have another email. We're on old fashioned paper. We're on old fashioned paper. Old fashioned paper. Sometimes we, you just gotta you just gotta go for it. You know, we put the letters in the thing and we put the ink on it and then we rolled it through the print press and that's how we got it. Yeah, like we, we worked a printing press. We rented what you're saying. We worked a printing press to get this on paper. <laughs> I think that's the word you're looking for. Printing press? It's printing press. Uh, I don't know. You put the letters and they ink it up. <laughs> it's before my time. <laughs> the Gutenberg. The is Gutenberg. It, I think that's what it's called. The Gutenberg. Is it called the Gutenberg? Gutenberg Press, I'm pretty sure. 
I don't know. I'm going to look it up. Gutenberg. You did it. Yep. Created by Gutenberg in Mainz, Germany. Mainz. Mainz. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, it matters to the people in Germany. Oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. Yes. I'm sorry, Germany. Yes. It yeah, matters apologize. a lot. You guys, you guys had the first printing press. Congratulations. By a guy named Gutenberg. You did it. Yay. You did <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna send balloons to Germany. <laughs> you did. <laughs> when was this? A fourteen forty AD. <laughs> <laughs> We're sending it to you really past when it was due, but we're gonna send you those balloons and that present for that wonderful thing you did that one time. So, uh, here's my next email, and this came via DM yep. in our Instagram, right? Yep. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. Hey. Hello. Hi. So, after 20 years of wanting to play Derby, I'm 36, I'm finally doing it. I passed Derby 101 in December, and I've been playing since then. I wanted to play for so long, but school got in the way, then college. Then I kept getting jobs that were either shift work or at unpredictable times, so I couldn't commit to practice times. Then I had my baby, and I said to my partner, this is my time. This is when I can change jobs after parental leave. I'm doing it. I need to do this for me. So I made it happen. And you're right. It saved my soul. The people I play with are amazing and loving and so supportive. That is the best thing about Derby. It's infiltrated my life in the best way. And that comes from Rory Kilmore. She, her. And I also appreciate the gilmore girls reference yes from... i i know a gory kilmore yeah and this is rory kilmore mm. i appreciate all of the gilmore girl references uh rory is from ontario canada <gasps> canada she is from the durham region roller derby in ontario canada hey ontario canada yeah Shout out, Canada. Hey, Canada. Hey. We've got quite a few listeners in Canada. We do. We do. We love you, Canada. I, you know, when I travel, I've always said that I was just going to travel and tell people I'm Canadian. That's not unwise. <laughs> <laughs> As a person who's traveled a lot. Yeah. Anyway, um, so, yeah, thank you, Rory. We, I totally get that story of, like, wanting to do it, but then life just gets in the way and gets in the way and gets in the way. And, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that you were able to find it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I just. I'm right there with you. Yeah, to prioritize yourself and. Yep self-care and i know that term gets used a lot but doing something for yourself especially after having a baby or life changes like that there is a huge identity crisis when it when you become a parent mm. to where you're just mom right and or you know a partner you know it's you lose a lot of your identity because like now your mom isn't calling to talk to you anymore. They're calling to talk to your child. <laughs> you know? And people are asking, they're, they stop asking about you and start asking about your child. There's like such a huge identity thing that goes on after you have a kid. And I completely understand needing something, anything to make it your own, to have your own thing. Like in, in Derby, I'm not mom. I am Slice. Slice. Yes, you are. You know, I am my own person. I'm doing my own thing. And for two hours or three hour practice, I'm just focused on Derby. And it's it's really nice to have your own thing and, and create that part of your identity. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So thank you so much for that. I'm I'm just so happy. I'm so happy you got it. And I'm happy it saved your soul. Yeah, I it does that a lot. Yeah. It Aww, makes me happy. Look at Derby doing it. Derby's doing it. Derby's doing it. <laughs> Uh, all right, so our final uh, message today is, again, through our DMs on Instagram, and this is from Fritz Creek, and she plays in, or she lives in Cincinnati now, and she's with the Cincinnati Roller Girls. Uh, hi, I listened hi. to... <laughs> <laughs> Like startled me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi. 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 <laughs> Not expecting the the call and response. Okay. <laughs> I listened to your first episode last week. I live in Cincinnati now, but I grew up in New Hampshire 
and went to school in New London, Connecticut. So it's really neat to hear you guys talk about Groton and the Gold Star Bridge and Bruce Boutique. I learned about roller derby in 2018 and started in 2019, but I really wish I had known about it earlier. My derby origin story. A friend talked me into trying derby in late 2019. I immediately loved it, despite having no idea how to skate. LOL. I made the team Cincinnati Roller Girls the first week in March, so the week before everything shut down. I spent the pandemic on skates at the park and trail skating. When Derby came back in 2022, I was elected to the leadership position and then promptly tore my ACL. I ended up spending the 2022 season as a bench coach. I learned a ton and I really loved it. This past season, I finally got to play and it's been really awesome. It's really fun to listen to you both and hear relatable stories. Looking forward to continuing to listen. Thanks, Fritz Krieg. Well, thanks, Fritz Krieg. So I completely understand uh, where they're coming from because i that's how I learned roller derby um, before I started actually skating when I was still a freshie. I was doing bench coaching for our itty bitty little season yeah yeah you were great at it <laughs> i loved it yeah it was awesome I loved it. it was like i there's a lot of things that you learn as doing nso positions yeah that yeah oh man if you're a freshie volunteer for all the things yeah for you're sure. gonna learn so much yep yep for sure yeah and i totally get that tearing you <laughs> like trying and trying and learning and then covid and then oh you're, you're back skating and then you show your acl and now you're coaching which is a great experience but now you get to skate so i'm really excited that you're skating the season and yeah. i wish you all the best with that and i do i hope your acl stays healthy yeah you don't same. have to go borrow knees from people yeah there's just not <laughs> enough there's just not enough knees to go around <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're skating and we wish you all the best and and uh, thank you so much for listening and writing in. So yeah. please don't forget if you would like to share your origin story or how you came up with your name or yeah, those are the two big things I want to know right now. Like, yeah, what's I your really, story. Yeah. How did you how did you come up with your name? I love I would love to do a whole episode on how people came up with their names because there's just so many fun ones out there. Yeah. There really is. God, there's so many fun ones. There's so many ones. And there's so many niche ones. It's it's fun to see niche names in a niche sport. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> It's true. Actually, my name, I really wanted my name to be Marla Stinger. And not many people would get exactly where that's from right away. Do you know what that's from? Marla Stinger. Mm. It rings a bell. Yeah. Um, my like One of my top favorite movies is Fight Club. And the oh. female character, which is Helena Bonham Carter's character, is Marla Singer. That's why it rings a bell. Yeah. And she she is just she's my favorite actress i love hbc like she is uh, the best and i just i felt the marla stinger and that's how i feel mm. kind of when i play derby <laughs> she's also mrs lovitz is she now yeah and sweeney todd in the oh movie, yeah that's in right the movie. oh yeah. i totally knew that i totally yeah. knew that. Oh, i thought you meant like sh she got married and her last name is now like mrs lovitz <laughs> She's Mrs. Lovitz now. I don't know if you've heard, but <laughs> she, <laughs> she married Carter. a person named yeah. Lovitz. <laughs> <laughs> She's Mrs. Lovitz now. Yeah. Anywho. <laughs> so don't forget to, uh, you can email us at coming hot into the box at gmail.com or you can uh, get us through the website or you can DM us on Instagram. Yeah. All those things. All those things. All We'd right. love to hear from you. And that's, uh, that's our first mini episode. Yeah. That's our thanks. first open skate. Thanks for coming to open skate, everybody. Thanks for coming to open skate. Until next time, I am Carnage. I'm Slice. See you later. Bye.